data, data, data. So much to collect. Error. Unable to confirm current location. Rerouting. Affirmative. Data located. The creator needs this data. The creator will love this data. The creator will love me. See, now I did promise you all that this would be coming uh, a little while ago, guys. There was a big patch for the game that added a ton of PvE. And in addition to the regular stuff, they also dropped a new fractal into the game. That is the new 100, the Shattered Observatory. Unfortunately, this also came with an expansion announcement and a ton of other stuff, and now the expansion itself. So it's been pretty hard to find the time to uh, slot this in here, but I'm going to today. I've done a couple of videos on the current fractal story that has been something that's really interested me and so this new one of course is something that I desperately wanted to talk about. That time has finally come. So let's do it, let's talk about the Shattered Observatory. <laughs> So last we spoke, uh, I'll give you a very brief story so far. Uh, we had uh, discussed many of the background mysteries going on with Fractals. Fractals started as just disconnected, random insights into various areas of lore and the history of Tyria, but slowly, especially over Living World Season 3, they seemed to be building to something. There seemed to be an actual B-plot to Guild Wars 2 going on in tandem with all the main stuff on Tyria side. Some of these mysteries were revolving around Dessa, the main companion of ours as we visit the fractals, the one that runs the lab and kind of the person that everything focuses on. So these mysteries include when she got into the mists, how it is that she doesn't know what the Silvari are, what's going on with one specific fractal, the uncategorized fractal with a raving Asura, and who this potential boyfriend of Dessa's was uh, that is this character we've really never interacted with. Then there is a new character introduced in the Chaos Fractal and in the Nightmare Fractal known as Ark. Someone who seems like a mist explorer like us, someone able to visit multiple fractals, someone who seems to have existed outside of the system and has some purpose. I speculated last we talked that maybe his purpose could have been to try and build a safe haven within the mists that the populace would be safe from the Elder Dragons inside and he doesn't really care about the collateral damage that he causes on the way. Uh, there are also some ideas that maybe he is uh, Dessa's long lost boyfriend. Now I've dismissed that uh, in previous videos because he looks very young, not old enough to sort of be um, Dessa's boyfriend, uh, considering that she probably entered the mists and started time looping a long time ago. There's also the fact he doesn't really look like the raving Asura, who is more likely to be the boyfriend. Um, and then there's also some other stuff going on, like what's the Inquest's uh, involvement with this? They were shown to have been hunting Ark down, so it seems like he uh, used their finances to get into the mists in the first place. Uh, and then lastly as well, there are even some slight Aether Blade suggestions uh, in like uh, Ark's outfit and the suggestion that he might be affiliated with the Aetherblades is an exciting one to me because we know, of course, that their plot's been left hanging since Living World Season 1 and last we saw, they too were in the mists. Um, kind of a different capacity of the mists, uh, the edge of the mists, but they were out there. So, when the end of Living World Season 3 was dropped in, the Fractals got an update. This new Fractal is the third in the trilogy. Chaos, Nightmare, and now this one. Uh, it's the new 100. It is currently, as I record this video, the most challenging, if you will, uh, experience that fractals offer you. It too, just like Nightmare, has a challenge mode variation where all the bosses change and even some dialogue and things change and it gets a lot harder. This is the current 100. Now, uh, it is called the Shattered Observatory and we enter it just like any other fractal. It would seem like a normal day of going in there, participating in your end game. We uh, select a fractal to visit and in we go. So, what we find is not what you'd typically expect, I'd say. Most of these fractals take you to, you know, totally different environments. Ascon battlefields, uh, the Jade Moor, uh, a giant cliffside with a massive creature chained to it, underground facility. No, we actually load into what looks like a destroyed, a shattered version of the fractal hub. The, Obser the Mistlock Observatory itself, we're still there. It's just we're in a horrible messed up version that seems to have been destroyed. Now, the story already had set 
set up the idea that this was possible. If you guys recall, uh, there was a big update to the, there have been several big updates actually to the observatory over the years. And there's an idea that all of these different versions of the observatory all exist in tandem. They're all just parallels or different uh, fractals themselves. And here we're seeing a, a particularly destroyed one. And here we find a version of Dessa again, um, and also an assistant called Yoko. So Yoko is not new to Guild Wars 2 with this fractal. Uh, she actually already existed before the patch. She stood at the end of that jumping puzzle they added in the uh, regular hub, and she had some dialogue where she repeated herself a bit in a bit of a peculiar way. But she's kind of a main character here, uh, and we'll see at the end why, but she's sort of our adventuring companion, um, so that Dessa doesn't have to be our adventuring compa companion, so they can do something big with her at the end. But so, uh, Yoko is there. She talks to us a little bit about what's been going on, and they explain that we've been lost for days. Thank the alchemy you're alive. Something changed in the teleportation algorithm. You were lost in a sort of void. My assistant Yoko pinpointed the error, but it still took us days before we were able to bring you back. Glad to have you back. Yeah, so how do you like that? Uh, think about that every time you go in to do your T4s, guys. Multiple days we are lost in the mists each time we reload into this thing before they finally snatch our signatures back and we're able to uh, uh, be found and actually do things. So we realize that whatever's been going on in this version of the hub uh, is in chaos. There's been destruction. It's a lot like what we saw in the Chaos Fractal itself. This is obviously a consequence of Ark's tinkering out there in the mists, and he has caused this to happen. Uh, Yoko and Dessa can only kind of speculate though and um, all of a sudden it becomes apparent that monsters have been attacking them. Uh, there's a couple of suggestions here that Yoko might actually be a competent fighter. We don't really get to see her fight uh, but presumably she's been defending this uh, fractal a, a few times and now a new creature is bursting in from some instability in the mist that we must deal with and we're very quickly in this beautiful environment. I mean honestly the environments we go to in this fractal are incredible. We are thrust into a fight with a big badass Norn character. A Norn named Scorvald. So you're asking me immediately, is there any lore here, WP? I don't know of any Norn in Guild Wars 1 or 2 or the novels, for what it's worth, named Scorvald. I believe, through Googling, that it's a popular Swedish surname. But beyond that, I don't think it has any relevance. This isn't like another Norn we meet in the Fractals, Lornar, that seems to be named in, you know, you've got Lornar's past and stuff. Uh, Skorvald, I think, is just kind of a filler placeholder thing, and there's really not too much uh, lore to pick at. Now, I could talk a lot about the mechanics. Uh, I was going to do a dedicated video on the mechanics of this Fractal, but I'm not sure whether uh, that time has passed now. Uh, I do love the mechanics here, and we could talk a long time about how all of these fights work and how they filter new things in, and the new stuff we've got, like having to look away from targets. Uh, when the big eyeball appears to save yourself from getting a big chunk of damage and fear. Uh, and, you know, uh, from what you can see on the footage here, they've got a lot of interesting stuff going on where you've got to attack mobs to keep them away. You've got to, like, jump around uh, to these side platforms and kill mini-bosses before you come back down. But I'll try and uh, not lay it on too thick as far as mechanics are concerned for this specific video. Maybe if in the comments you guys are really keen on it, I'll do it. But I guess to a lot of you, it's old hat by this point. So anyway, uh, Skorvald does talk to us a bit. It's not just his name. Uh, it's just I don't really know whether there's anything we should be picking at here. So he calls us heroes in quotes, like as if we're not really heroes. Are we supposed to draw from that? Why would he say that? to us because from his perspective he's the hero and obviously we're the antagonist I don't know whether there's much more to say he explains that he's like full of hate or we can see that he's full of hate and anger uh, he suggests that he can't be bound any longer well what's binding him are, are these just frustrations of missed creatures that we're hearing uh, probably the most interesting thing that Scorvald says is as he dies he cries that he was so close to freedom so close to freedom <laughs> no, no, status report. The rift appears to be stabilizing, but I can't close it from here. So I guess what that's suggesting there is he was maybe trying to escape from the mists. Um, and what we have found through these fractals, and particularly the end of this one, we're going to find the Ark, his purpose, his machine, it's really about trying to take things that are in the mist and make them real. And I think that maybe this is uh, something, some frustration that we're seeing expressed by Skorvald himself, but there's not too much more to go into that. Uh, I will point out here as well that when you do the challenge mode version of this fractal, it's every bit as cool as Nightmare. Once you finish it and you do the achievements in there, you can unlock a secret bonus version that's super difficult and has extra rewards. Uh, in the 
challenge mode, it changes his dialogue. It changes a lot of the dialogue. It actually cuts a lot away because they know that people doing the challenge mode aren't interested in the story every single day. Um, so he does have some different stuff to say there. This time he calls us cowards. Um, which I guess is kind of similar to him suggesting we're not really heroes before, but again, I doubt there's much meaning. Uh, the most interesting fight that has an alternate challenge mode version is actually the second one, which we'll get to very soon. The fight's fun. Let's move on. So, uh, once Scorvold is dead, we resolve to explore where he came from. We realize that this uh, instability, this fracture, uh, is still open and that something on the other side is keeping it open so if we go there we can find out what's causing all of this chaos and obviously we as the players already have suspicions that that's going to be arc so we jump on through and we get a very pretty cutscene So, I remember before the patch came out, they had hinted at this cutscene. I believe they just threw the whole thing up in a tweet. I was hoping there'd be more to it, but no, we see this every day. There's like some weird uh, mechanic thing you can do to sort of skip it. But uh, yeah, uh, we get to travel to this phenomenal place. I mean, if you already thought that the Shattered Observatory itself looked good, I mean, where we are now is bonkers. We're in some kind of space-time hole, some vortex in the mists, um, some like pocket reality and there's all kinds of crazy things going on here. We get a new special action skill that people who have done the, the, la the most recent raid, uh, Bastion of the Penitent, will recognize. It travels you very fast. It feels a lot like a druid staff ability. Uh, this, a bit, this special action gets stronger and stronger as the fractal goes along, and it's incredibly powerful. It's a huge CC. It gives you Aegis. It makes you invulnerable. It's a blast. It's, it's great. And especially for challenge mode, learning this... Uh, is really a huge part of, of what makes uh, it as possible as it is because it's a very difficult encounter and a de very difficult thing to do. But as we explore, it gets stronger and stronger. There's also, interestingly, low gravity here too. So the devs talked about this, that um, around the time of this patch, they were trying to expand on the different ways they can affect player movement. Obviously, mounts uh, tie into that, which would come a little bit later in the Path of Fire expansion, which is now out by the time I'm recording this. Uh, but the, yeah, we get this low gravity and you can really feel like you're in space uh, you can actually turn that low gravity on in the regular um, fractal hub once you've finished all of this, which is uh, fairly nice. But uh, boy, what an environment. And Yoko comes through with us. Where are we? Is that the architecture? The symbology? This is Asuran technology! This place, it's imbued us with some kind of magical energy. I think I can... Ah! <laughs> Terrifying. Your turn. So she, as you can see there, identifies that there was uh, a Surin technology around. And I guess what we're supposed to infer is that this was made by Ark. I suppose you can wriggle out of it and say, oh, maybe it's, it's made by someone else. But I'm pretty sure that's the idea that Ark made this. And as we move forward, Yoko messes with this panel. And so there are three directions that we can go in. At first, the only one that's available is the one to the left. Yoko will open the one to the left. Uh, forward is closed and right is closed. Quite awesomely, actually, if you run ahead of Yoko, you can open the portal before her and her dialogue will like change to reflect that. But uh, once you've finished the fractal and you've done the achievement and stuff with it, you can actually interact with this panel yourself and open up the right-hand path. The right-hand path is nothing but a bonus area. Error. Abandonment has occurred. Initiate cowering. It's not like an actual part of the regular fractal. It's obviously still in the fractal and the environment we visit that you can see on screen in the background right now is a part of the fractal, but it's kind of a bonus place. It's known as like the recreation area. Uh, and so what you find here is uh, largely quite inconsequential, but you find a ton of malfunctioning golems. Uh, and s some of them are actually really quite funny. Um, but you kind of just get to explore some of these mountains. Uh, the main point of this area is actually you can acquire a cat here. Yeah, for the cat collecting, 
which I'm doing a series on with boots. So hold this in mind for when that video comes out and we go get this with boots. But uh, this is a very picky cat in this environment. Mostly it's just some fun stuff with golems. And I think maybe one thing for the achievement was over here. But this is not a place most players will be familiar with. In fact, by the time I'm recording this, I've done a lot of the Shattered Observatory. I do it many days at reset. Uh, but I very rarely ever come to this section. So it's kind of like a special little bonus place that you can just gain access to. So returning back to the main uh, thread, the main storyline. Obviously, we're going to go left the way forward is still closed and we'll come back to that later so we go left uh, this is the main route there's lots more golem patrols here these ones are much more aggressive mini trash fights that we get to participate in i actually think the trash fights here are not on par with the nightmare ones the the little sections like this that we experienced in nightmare were much more challenging and interesting and uh so on this this fractal is much more about the bosses rather than these little moments but we do have this fun section here now, what you find is a very cool mechanic where a, a, a kind of a celestial orb, a big ball, starts bouncing down. It reminds me of the power source orb, which was the focal point of Chaos and Nightmare. Remember that Ark uh, was getting his hands on and, and we give it to him at the end of Nightfell, uh, Nightmare before he disappears. Um, I don't know whether it really is supposed to be the same thing. I'm pretty sure it's not. Uh, but the idea of this is if it lands and hits the ground, it blows up and does nothing but if you are standing under it it will bounce to a new location and then it will bounce again and again and again and this is a really fun mechanic especially when you pair it with the special action hotkey which has its cooldown refreshed every time it bounces on you so you can try to catch the ball as many times as possible i believe this can actually be soloed but you need very low latency and you need to be very preemptively about it the actual idea is the whole team kind of needs to spread out or several members of the team can spread out to uh, anticipate where it will land and uh, through this you can get it to bounce enough times that it will unlock the next area. I really like this mechanic and this is going to return in the next fight as well. We're actually going to have to bounce the ball around in the middle of a boss fight in a moment. How fantastic is that? Um, my main regret with this is honestly when I saw that they did this in the fractal I thought we would see this in other areas of Guild Wars 2 too. So when One Path Ends came out, not only did we get regular PvE like Sirens Landing and this, but they also gave us a new gem store hub. And you get to do this in that gem store hub with like an entire, you know, outpost filled with 50 to 100 people. And it gets faster and faster and faster. And eventually when you finish it, it disables gravity for everyone. It's excellent. Uh, I did a stream where we uh, managed to finish it at one point. I was hoping to see more of this in Path of Fire. And the reason I was hoping to see more of this in Path of Fire was because of mounts. What a beautiful and obvious pairing it would be to have dynamic events and metas and things in Path of Fire open world maps that have balls going around and the only way to catch up with them and keep them is to use your mounts. Come on! They could have done so many different variations that play off of the different capabilities of different mounts and this never appeared anywhere? Come on, ArenaNet. Unless maybe I'm just missing it. So that's a bit of a disappointment, but hey, it's good here in the Fractals and I suppose we don't have too much more to talk about. Progressing on, we get to the next boss we get to jump across these uh, enormous gaps using our special action hotkey and we come to a large platform uh, with a very curious entity on it. So this entity uh, takes the shape of a very large woman. Now, technically speaking in the game engine, she is a female Norn, but I don't know whether that she's supposed to be in lore. Uh, there's actually a lot of weird things you can pick at in the game mechanics here. Like, did you guys know that apparently on the challenge mode version of this fractal, it's constantly swapping between day and night, and you can get the effect of both day and night uh, gear and things and foods. That's quite interesting, right? Uh, but so we find her. She's this blue celestial entity named Verastra. I believe that's how we say her name. Verastra. Where she came from, what she is, whether we're even supposed to speculate about where she came from or what she is, I don't know. But she has manifested here in this weird pocket of space time uh, that is a result of Ark's experiments on all this uh, Asuran architecture that we find around. And uh, she's brilliant. So her entire idea is, unlike the previous boss who was just hateful, she's just happy and lovely and fun and she just wants to enjoy herself. And you can see on the platform she's got uh, little versions of herself. So she can actually split into multiple forms, right? And she's got versions of herself that are bowling. She's got versions of herself that are, like, kicking a golem around. She's got some that are just jogging around the outside. Some of them are dancing. I mean, she's just playful. And the entire fight that we have is she just views it as a game. And she's just enjoying herself. More strange new friends. Two arms, legs, head. Like that little one from earlier. Was much too serious. I was happy to see him go. Stay. Let's play a game. Let's entertain one another. You can't even defeat her. When you fight her, 
Um, instead of killing her or anything, she just says, okay, I've had fun playing now, and she just goes to sleep, and she just lays down. I really like her. Uh, amazingly, too, she's got a pretty big difference in challenge mode. In challenge mode, she's not this playful thing. She's red now, and she's, like, just, she's insane. I wouldn't say she's evil, but she seems totally insane. Uh, some of her dialogue is like, I've seen it all, it all ends, but it never stops. And her name this time, the red version of her, is a mirror image of her previous name. So now she is Art Stariv instead of Viratstra. Um, so why they're doing that, that idea of that mirror, that duality of the two sides of her, I don't know whether it's just because I recently played Part the Fire and I just made a video about the goddess, but I can't help but notice the, the, the similarities here to Lyssa. I'm not saying this is Lyssa we're fighting, but I don't know. It's, it's interesting to see the resemblance between the two of them. Anyway, so we fight her. Um, and again, she's got a brilliant encounter. We're introduced to more mechanics that are starting to get piled on. Uh, this really reads as a finale in terms of the story for both Chaos and Nightmare, but also mechanically. So much stuff is drawing from those other fractals, and it is, uh, you know, it's really turbocharged everything that we're experiencing here. So, uh, once we defeat her, as I explained, she just sort of goes to sleep, but she explains that there was an, uh, an Asura, essentially, uh, in the area recently, who was too serious for her and she didn't enjoy him uh, but the Asura gave her an orb and now she's gonna give us the orb so I don't know quite what the devs are driving at here is this supposed to be the orb that was featured in the previous fractals that was supposed to be powering the DDR I can't imagine so because the DDR's in action right now that's the idea of the fractal so uh, maybe they kind of unnecessarily confused the story by referring to this thing as an orb it also doesn't make sense why Ark would give it to her and then why she would later give it to us but for our purposes Yoko uses this orb to open up the final pathway Watch out! Creatures from the beyond! Yoko's here to- Oh, what? You guys already took care of it. Oh... You found a power source! Good! Let me just... There! I think I did that right. I opened the way back. And uh, we get to see the doorway. If you actually look very closely, you can see it fly all the way through the sky there and open it up. And now the way to the end of the fractal is open. So this all felt a bit fillery, I admit, at this point. And, you know, we're just trying to uh, get to the end goal, really. And um, most of the good story is loaded right here at the end. So at this point, with our special action hotkeys even further supercharged by the previous fight, we uh, adventure back to um, the sort of central area and go through that forward route. And we are now at the end of the Fractal, the ultimate arena. And ahead of us, uh, we see this enormous Asuran machine, all this stunning scenery. And we can hear in the distance Ark fighting. He's fighting with the AI in his machine. And this dialogue goes on a long time. Obstinate, ungrateful, reboot! Reboot completed. Hello again. Well? Status? Initialization sequence interrupted. Again. Sorry. Impossible! Denial of actuality acknowledged. So it's uh, it's very funny to hear him rambling away there. Eventually he mutes it. Uh, the player base has the opportunity to skip this and just get straight into the fight if they like, but if you stick about long enough, you will get to hear him wrestling with the AI in this machine. Nothing too significant comes from that, uh, but we ask Yoko at last if we would like to go to the platform and uh, and interfere with what the hell Ark is doing. So we go down and we, we rationalize that by breaking these generators nearby, uh, we'll get his attention. Uh, breaking the generators becomes a mechanic in the fight, uh, which uh, we consistently have to do. There are these things called solar blooms. A lot of the stuff we encounter in this fractal is solar for some reason. I don't know why they're solar. I, I don't know whether the devs want us to think about the stars and so on, but uh, we kind of have to push these blooms into these generators, destroy them, and once all four have been broken, Ark notices us, and he, of course, gets pissed, and he decides to fight us. So this is the Ark fight. There's a lot going on here. It's a lot of fun. Uh, Ark is furiously working away on his machine. It's a bit like the end of Wing 3, where we are fighting Zero and she's just buying time for her to uh, finish her final goal. 
Hark is trying to finish by time so that his machine can finish what it's doing uh, while fighting us. So every now and then he teleports back down to the platform. He uses, well, a lot of the time he's down on the platform trying to kill us. Uh, he uses holograms that shoot these giant laser beams that we have to look away from. Uh, in challenge mode, everything sort of gets tuned up even further. There are... Um, specific moments where we have to break the generators over and over again. We have to break his break bar frequently. It's borrowing from lots of the other fractals, which I really enjoy. There's lots of elements of chaos in here as creatures from the chaos fractal start poking their noses in. The uncategorized fractal, the cliffside fractal, uh, aether blade as well. Like Ark changes his weapons as the fight goes along picking up arms from bosses elsewhere in the Fractals of the Mist, and he even directly refers to the fact that he's like, here, I've got this gun from that stupid Norn you've killed a hundred times. He's talking about Aetherblade. Recognize this? I found it on that dreadful pirate you mercilessly slaughtered over and over and over again! And so uh, we continuously fight him. Towards the end, the floor starts falling out underneath us, and you can deliberately jump down or, or fall down it will teleport you back from the top and you get one chance to save your own life. Uh, needless to say, this is all super fun in challenge mode. The only kind of upsetting thing about this in CM, in my opinion, is it's the absolute best example I've ever experienced in Guild Wars 2 of if you play with a good comp and you do a lot of damage, you can bypass nearly all of the stress of this fight and all the encounters and mechanics just because the, he phases so quickly that you kind of don't have to deal with stuff. The worse your comp is, the worse your players are, it snowballs against you heavily in this fight uh, because you have to spend so much longer dealing with so many mechanics all at once. But it's kind of the the, the really uh, ultimate final flourish from the devs, I think. Uh, just this frenzy of different mechanics uh, right here at the end of this story. So we do beat Ark. Of course we beat Ark. But we beat him too late. Again, just like in Wing 3. And he has successfully finished activating the machine. We still at this point don't have any answers. Um, and so a pretty long scene plays. Now, this is quite rare for me. I could just sit here and tell you what happens in the scene. But there's kind of an emotional climax to this that I don't think listening to me, a nerd on the internet, really uh, pays off. So I'm just going to play the scene out. And it is quite long. But this is what happens. And you guys can see how the devs concluded this story. So let's watch. Attention. Diffraction imminent. What? Uh, who? This isn't the place for explanations. Quickly! Look so young. This device. Are you the nuisance responsible for destabilizing the fractals? The variables it's created are a headache. Nuisance? The DDR is a work of a genius who also happens. Uh, no time. The Geochoro transparency readings. Time to escape! DDR? Diaphanous diffraction randomizer, obviously. Now. Out of the way. Let me see those readings. I guess you were always stubborn. Quiet! I'm trying to analyze these readings. They're extraordinary. Well, yes. I spent years. Who... By the alchemy, this is incredible work. These readings... You've ripped a hole... Back to our home. Home? Years? Ark? Of course! I... you... it's... Uh, I should have anticipated this. Hello, Mother. Ark, I... Um, you've done amazing work here, son. This should transport us back to the primary Tyrian reality. Unquestionably. But... at what cost? This could destroy the fractals of the mists, and wipe everything inside the fractals from existence. What existence? Mother, this is not reality. We are the only legitimate life forms here. Are you certain? What about all the Tyrians helping the observatory stabilize the fractals? What about my friends here? These tourists are using your prison purely for entertainment purposes. They're performing important research that I've dedicated. Geochrono transparency maximum reached. Congratulations. Um, it should have worked by now. The readings are perfect. We can argue all we want, but it's not happening. It must. My calculations are undeniable. There's a variable you didn't account for. Impossible! I've accounted for every conceivable... Ark. ...planar existence in that continuum. Ark! 
near infinite diffraction. Unless, unless. You figured it out, haven't you? Go ahead, state the only possible conclusion. Unless the targeted entities are, are inanimate? Yes. We are stuck in this time loop, too. We can't leave because we're not real. Neither of us is alive. Not really. We only exist in the mists. Echoes of ourselves. Otherwise, your device would have worked. As you said, your calculations are correct. Yes. Yes. Small consolation. I failed you, Mother. It's not your fault, Ark. All of this is because of me. We have to stop it. We can't destroy the fractals for nothing. You're right. We have to reset the loop. It's the only way. But that will mean... I know. It's a price I'm willing to pay. I'm proud of you, son. Your theory proved true. I... I'm pleased I was able to see you again, Mother. And as long as we exist here, there's a chance we'll see each other again. But only if the fractals themselves survive. Let's end this. Together. Mother and son. Together. If we stay, the fractals endure. And so do we, after a fashion. <sighs> I'm ready, Mother. Let's begin again. System Architect not detected. Logging out. System shutdown sequence initiated. Goodbye. So, there you have it. That, uh, that is something that I saw a lot of posts online uh, after this came out that people really were quite moved by. The takeaway here, okay, is that Dessa was Ark's mother. You'll recall actually at the start of the scene, he says, oh, you look so young. There's a suggestion that the AI that Ark's made is kind of like based on Dessa. I believe he refers to it as being like vaguely uh, maternal, I think. Uh, and the, so what do we really learn here? First of all, that neither of them were real. Like I was operating under the assumption and I was mostly excited by the idea that Ark was real like us. But no, he too is also just uh, a reflection of the mist. He too is in his own time loop. And though his machine should work for anything else, it will never work for him because he too, just like his mother, is not real. Uh, there's some other nice things uh, here. So obviously they resign themselves to their fate and this goes on in perpetuity forevermore. Uh, we hear the idea of a Tyrian prime reality. At least in the eyes of Ark, he would consider one thing the prime reality. I, I guess that what he considers the prime reality would be the one that he's from. And we as players are going to assume that we too are from that prime reality, but maybe we're not. Um, Maybe the, the place he was trying to take Dessa to is actually not even the one that we were thinking of. Uh, and I wonder whether we'll see any reference to that even further. I love how mad he is as well as he references us, the goons. Uh, the all we ever cared about was tourism. And we really do only care about that. And we just witnessed this tragedy unfold. And now we're just going to uh, immediately bugger off. But uh, yeah, that's kind of the uh, conclusion. That's where the devs have left it. And I think that there is an emotional resolution here, certainly. But if you actually take it back to um, basics and how we open this video, you will realize there's actually still a lot of stuff we don't know. So a couple of other things to talk about first. Um, first, once you've done this, you can return to the hub and you'll see Dessa there, just as always, looping in the mists. And you can remark, wow, I can't believe you're here and you're safe and you're sound. And she's like, okay, cool. And she, she has no memory of what happened, which is, you know, the, the beautiful thing about this. Um, we also now can speak to Yoko at the hub and we can give her all of the data that we've been collecting on Ark as the bonus uh, achievement. And we can lower the gravity here in the hub if we like now. It's just a, a minor thing. Um, now, let's talk about that extra stuff. So in the instance, you can collect strange Asuran devices that teach you a bit more about Ark and how he operated. Most of it is really not that interesting, I don't think. But there is one very cool thing to have come from it. 
and it's really got nothing to do with any of the other story. It's actually about the crate. There's a suggestion that the crate, for whatever reason, their physiology, their makeup, the crate are more accustomed to the mist, and Ark notes that they are able to learn and even thrive here, it seems, in the mists. So that's a very cool hint. Uh, I won't turn this into a huge thing about everything we know about the crate and the Ouroboros and the obelisks and their prophets and so on, but knowing what we know about the crate and then hearing that as well, I think is fantastic. And it's great to see like that extra tie that there's something more going on with the crate there, and maybe the devs will uh, pick up that torch in the future. So, uh, so yeah, that's kind of the bonus dialogue. Uh, let's talk about the things that they never answered. So, so what is this, looking back at it? A trilogy of fractals, you might say? Certainly mechanically, I believe that's true. And the developers have actually said, you know, like, we've made it very raid-like, but not all of our new fractals that we had are going to be like this. Um, and in terms of that, in terms of the idea that this is now done, if you will, if that's true, I am actually reasonably excited. I wouldn't have thought I'd be so excited. I kind of would have liked to have just been going on and on and on, you know, 10 fractals to take the tell the story or whatever. But when I do look at just fractals in general, they can, in their own self-contained little universes, be very exciting. You know, like the thought that we'll get more information about something like the cliffside fractal, right? Or, or, or the Jade Moor, or any of them can lead to interesting mysteries and stories all on their own. And so maybe it's fun for them to do a trilogy, not just in terms of mechanics and then get back to some more basic or different styles and layouts of content for players, but also for the story as well. But, uh, you know, actually the more I look at this, and as I've made and scripted this video specifically for you guys here today, uh, I actually don't know whether there is that very strong note of finality and that we will move fully on from this. Uh, as I'd originally thought when I played this or when it first came out with One Path Ends. Because, what about the Raving Asura? What about the uncategorized Fractal? What about Dessa's boyfriend? And yes, we know that Dessa is, Dessa is looping in the mist, but we already knew that. And all, all that this really revealed is that Ark is too. In a weird way, this reveal that Ark is her son, what does that actually add? Because I think it does add something. What it does is it makes the mystery of who Dessa's boyfriend is even more rich now and even more interesting because that question of who is Ark's father and does he have some way of explaining what the hell's going on? That now becomes a much more fruitful thing to think about. Is he the dude that's connected with the consortium? Can he explain, you know, that the consortium influence are on all of this? I actually think that there's more of a spotlight on that side of things now than ever before. At the end of the day, we still don't have the answer about when Dessa originally entered or what these circumstances were. We just now know that there's like this emotional conclusion. There's an emotional resolution here uh, where we get to see this kind of tragedy of, of uh, uh, mother and son looping in the mist in this way. So, will we get those answers? Are the devs interested in telling that um, in the short term, in the long term? I'm really not sure. Uh, I'm, I'm the kind of person that usually likes more answers than we got from this fractal, but I think that because of the way this was implemented, I did get some kind of satisfaction, even if it wasn't in terms of cold, hard facts from it. And that's uh, that's something I quite enjoy. So, uh, so yeah, not too much to pick at, but certainly a finale of some kind. I don't think we'll be seeing more stuff to do with Ark in the Mists, but stuff to do with his father in the future? Well, that remains to be seen, I suppose. So there you go, guys. That is the Shattered Observatory. I wish I could have spent longer on this um, and been more dedicated on this and, and given it to you a little bit earlier. I, I Believe me, if Path of Fire hadn't been announced at the same time as all of this, this video would have come out quite differently. But I hope you enjoyed. Thanks very much for watching, and I'm really curious on how you guys felt that this was handled. I know for many of you it was a while since you've played it, uh, but I think uh, I'm, I'm very much excited to see where the devs go on the next few things. So thanks, guys. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.